Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Taff Rocks Midweek Shorts from Taff Rocks HQ. This week's Midweek Short has been inspired by Brian, who is a member of our Facebook group, and he says, Morning, been binge watching your great videos recently. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Would you add to your list, please, how to cast your own stones? where to get moulds etc, what paints and paint pens do you recommend and suppliers? Thank you for all your great work. Fabulous. Hopefully I'm going to be able to get everything together that he's asked for him and for you as well. Even though we've covered each of these topics in various videos, little did I realise that you guys wanted them all together. So I've tackled them all. I'm going to cut them into separate little sections. There's one part I have not done and that is how to cast your own stones. And the reason why I haven't done it is because in this video I'm going to be mentioning Devon Dotting and their moulds. Now Devon Dotting have done a brilliant little um, YouTube video of their own and I didn't want to replicate something that was already good. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below because in that video she runs through filling the moulds, tapping the moulds, using the paintbrush to get rid of the bubbles even, which I didn't want to replicate because I love that little video. Now when we go through these, you will notice that I haven't given you any of the manufacturer's instructions. There are instructions for paint pens on how to prime them. They're already on the packets which is simple as shaking them and pumping them on a piece of paper until the ink gets to the end. When you store your pens, store them flat. Many come in boxes and you'll be inclined to stand them up, but experience have shown me that this is no good. So store them flat and between every use, make sure the lid is on tight and before the next use, make sure you give them a bit of a shake and prime them again. When it comes to the materials for casting, please follow safety instructions again. Make sure that you've got eyewear on and a mask on because some of the products that I mentioned here could be harmful and I don't want you getting in any trouble because of me. So please, if you're a little and watching this, please get a grown up to cast your stones or at least mix it for you. Once it's wet, it should be fine for you to pour. But when it comes to mixing, please, adults only with safety equipment on. So this short is probably not going to be short. But before I get into it, if you could subscribe to our channel and click that little notification bell, I'd appreciate that very much. Let's get on and have a look at what I did earlier. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is paints. Now you can see I've got copious amounts of pots of paints here that are everywhere and it's all dependent on your budget. But don't think that cheap is also good because there are some super cheap brands that are I wouldn't recommend. These ones are the most expensive ones I've got. These are Arteza ones. This is a box of 10 iridescent ones. And then this box here has 20, um, dare I say, basic colours and a couple of extra colours mixed in. I'll put a link for these in the description box below. Then I have in this brand, this is Decrafts Artiste. This is Metallic Paint. These are brilliant. I got these from a craft shop. I think they were about a pound odd. You can get them from the likes of the range and so on. Uh, this one is the same brand and I got this from Hobbycraft and it cost me nearly twice as much. Nothing wrong with Hobbycraft though, okay. Also in here from Hobbycraft, I've got little pots of acrylic paint. When they've got a sale on, you know, the end of a festival of some description, I think these were after Easter. Um, just go and buy them. They're always coming handy. Fabulous little things, these. What else have I got here for you? I have, oh, this is fab. 
Oh God, glitterific. It's got lots of glitter in this. It's brilliant, I love it. It leaves a bit of a roughness on it and you've got to like sponge this on more than paint it on if you understand what I mean. I also have here acrylic paint again from a hobby craft with glitter already in now I don't rate this much personally because it's a gel and I don't like the gel but I didn't realize that at the time oh what else have I got oh, brands upon brands this stuff is brilliant for your budget these were less than a pound I've got a couple of pots of these in you brilliant they are student grade acrylic paint and that's it i can't even remember where i got these from uh, if you've got a watch shop then in there i think that's where i got these from also have studio acrylics is it pebio studio acrylics right these are iridescent and metallic and change color and uh, they're not the cheapest but you don't use a lot and they're absolutely blooming awesome absolutely fabulous what else have i got in here for you wilkinson's i can't remember how much this was but it definitely must have fitted in my budget otherwise i wouldn't have bought it and if you're looking for budget and quality at the same time this stuff this stuff is amazing Crawford and Black I got these particular ones from the works these are the ones that we use if we're going to be using acrylics in our workshops because they fit our budget absolutely perfect the budget constraints that I have I put on myself because I don't want to go mad and you now that can be a bit difficult sometimes do you know what I mean what else have I got in here uh, again this brand glow in the dark I can't say that big long word but there so it's, it's glow in the dark silver and gold or silver and copper same brand as these ones obviously these cost a little bit more when you consider that you pay the same price for both of these and there's a lot less in you undercoats let's have a look undercoats 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 okay so masonry paint tester pots it don't cost hardly anything now this one belongs to taff rocks i had to go and dig this out it's not even been opened yet and we were sold these at a clearance of 50p per little pot at b and q fabulous stuff if you want to use these as an undercoat instead of using all your white paint or whichever these are fantastic just to sort of seal your rock a little bit you know and give it a good base so that's them i may as well just check this in there also what i use is i've had to put it in another jar this is exterior paint it's a matte white and i love using this when i make my own little rocks and i'll be telling you more about these later this stuff is brilliant to kind of seal them a little bit and give them a good base what else have i got for you now there was a little pot of something in here we really want oh there it is okay this is glitter it does not come in these little pots okay it's from b and q and it's a glitter paint additive you get it in a bag and there's a shed load of it in the bag it might seem a little bit pricey but when you consider how much you get in the bag i think i filled about four maybe five of these and it's super fine stuff it is absolutely brilliant this is like a little pepper shaker which i got from ebay because this belongs to taff rocks and the kids use it when we have workshops and if you've got children or you work with children then you know how well children and glitter work together it's fabulous absolutely brilliant so if i can make any suggestions for you then stick to your budget don't go mad like i have it's taken me quite a while to get this whole setup of just acrylic paint again these were the most expensive ones that i've had um, i'm not going to make any recommendations on behalf of taff rocks but i will make some personal recommendations and start off with these 
also I got gifted this with 20 different colours in. This was also from the work as well and that was £8. I don't think I can tell you any more apart from acrylics is the way to go. I strongly, strongly advise that you do not use oil paints for rocks because it takes forever to dry and I'm not entirely sure how well it travels. If you know how well it travels when you share them out in the community, let me know in the comments below because then I'm pretty sure that the people that watch the video, they'd be interested to know as well. And I think that's it for acrylic paints. Let's move on to the next section. So the next thing we're going to be having a look at is paint pens, acrylic paint pens. They have come a long way, even from when I first started painting rocks, where it's quite difficult for me to tell you which is the best brand, which is the worst brand. I have my favourite, which I will tell you about, but I'm just going to run through a couple of the brands that I have. Again, this is my stash. The, sta the Tafrock stuff is still in storage because of the Covid. Uh, let's not go there. So I'm not even going to start in alphabetical order. Right, where do I start? Okay, the ones that you'll know about first. You probably would have heard of Posca pens. These are expensive, not for everybody's budget, but they are pretty cool. And these ones have a gigantic end piece and I adore these because I can use this as a base colour with hardly any work. Sheer laziness. So there's them ones. They also have your black, your white, um, your gold, your silver, so many different colours. Plus, of course, the fine ones. What I will say to you is, if you're going to use Posca pens, these are um, a very soft tip, these fine liners. And when you're using these on rough rocks, you'll wear the tip away. So I advise you against these and go for the more nylon tip. We'll talk about those in a second. What else have I got here? Right then. We have a brand called Flysy. Now, Tafrox use these because it fits in our budget. They come in this size. It's a medium size tip. I haven't got an open box here right now. And they also come in a fine liner. They have a nylon tip. Black and white are going to be your biggest high use colour and again like I said this brand also comes in um, a fine liner. We have, oh my gosh, so many different brands. You probably would have heard of Artistro. These are also brilliant. They come in a number of different sizes. This is my beaten up old box actually. This is um, Artistro. Um, special colours these are brilliant because in this pack you have various different skin tones and I love them to bits so they've got them and they also have these ones as I said just now it's very difficult for me to say to you which brand is the best because they've all come a long way when Tafrox first started, we used these Pinto Classic colours and oh, I'm starting to build a bit of a tower here. Metal colours, pastel colours and fun colours. These come in two sizes. So that's these nice chunky ones and do I have a medium one? Yes, I've got a medium one as well. So those are pretty cool. Again, links for all of these from wherever I can find them, I'll put in the description box below. Now we're going on to brands which you may or may not have heard from. These are Pinta Fine 
or 0.7 millimeter pink pens. Brilliant. Ew. My stack is it's gonna get up to the camera now. This is oh, this is another pack of RT straw pens. Hold on, I haven't even opened these. Ah yes. Another fine liner, 0.7 millimeter. I didn't even know I had half of these myself. Right. Am I getting there? Yeah, you can see them now. And then we're looking at brands that you might not have heard of, but they are still just as good. I think paint pen manufacturers have come to realize that rock painting is the way to go and it's a market that they need to tap into. Fusion pens, fine liners again. Um, what else? Oh, seems that we're on fine liners. Let me move some of these. This is my favorite brand. And if I could rave about these without getting done for promoting a product in one of our videos, then I would. But these come in something called an artist's dozen. So they've got your 12 colours plus, where did they go? Oh, an extra black and white. Now I have one open here, obviously this is green, and this is a fabulous little tip. Brilliant, they go a long way, but this is my favourite. A couple of the guys at Taff Rocks also like these, and if I was you, I'd get them whilst they're hot. Where am I next? Right, more brands that I've never heard of. Um, my packets are looking a bit, you know. This is, yes, I know, I got some missing. These are nice chunky ones. Those are fabulous. Again, manufacturers have come to realize that they should do a good job at paint pens. These ones, I think I won these, you know. Yes, I think I did. I won these. They're a, I'm going to call them a nondescript because there's no... The only brand in there is a, um, a business card. But yeah, I think I won those. And now we've got my everyday pack of chunkies. Okay, only because they're open and I don't like wasting pens. These are... I have absolutely no idea what brand these are. Uh, they've come from Amazon, they've come from eBay, they've come from Wish as well. So I've got a couple of boxes of these. I also have a smaller box with just 12 in these and I'm not sure how many is in here without me counting. I think there's 24 in these. So that's another brand which I can't even read that. I should be ashamed but I can't. So again, paint pens are all down to your budget. I put links to as many as I could possibly find for you in the description box below. These are fantastic because you can spray over these and well, in fact, you don't even have to spray over these. Let them dry and set them free. You don't have to seal these at all. Any of these pens actually. Same with the acrylic paints, once they dry, they're relatively water resistant. Now, if you've got a class of children or kids at home that you just want to draw on rocks with and they're not going to go traveling, okay? And I mean it now, not going to go traveling. These are Giotto paint markers. Now, there's a review on the, our website with these. These are Fell pens for rocks. They work great on rocks, but you cannot seal them and they eventually become bleached by the sun. But if they are for indoor projects with your kids, those are the way to go for you. Less mess and fabulous. What else have I got to show you? I think I've just about been through all of them. I've got stacks upon stacks of them by you now. Um, yes, I've done these. Done those, done those. There we are. That is your paint pens. I do believe that they do oil-based paint pens. I don't know if I've mentioned this already. Um, 
I've never used those, so I can't comment. Fibre tip pens or felt pens, no good really if you're sending them travelling. Um, Sharpie pens, fantastic, but if you spray on them with a sealant, if you're not careful, they'll run. Great for indoors with the kids, if you want to give your kids permanent markers. Fabulous. Or oh, if you want permanent markers, actually. So there we are. Paint pens. These up here, all of these were done with paint pens. Pretty much most of the things that you can see up here have been done with paint pens. Obviously, a couple have been done with the paints that you can see. Um, I don't know if you can. Can you see these on camera? Yes. These were done with acrylics. And yes. There we are. Next section. In this section, we're going to be having a look at molds. Now, I can talk for a million years about molds. These ones I'm going to show you first are cupcake molds or cake molds, which you can get from eBay, Amazon, pretty much anywhere and some of these are quite brilliant we use these molds down at Taff Rocks for some special projects and I'll run through with you in the next section of what I make those rocks out of there's these flat ones again Amazon eBay cake molds again in addition to those we have Again, cake moulds, but they're actually being sold as um, rock moulds now. These little things, soap moulds, these are. I make a lot of these, and I make an absolute gazillion load of these. These are fantastic. Have I got anything? Yes. There you go. Here's one made with these. And whilst I don't have anything made of these, here's one waiting to be decorated. One of my latest purchase of moulds has been this. It's from the Happy Dotting Company and it makes really nice flat shapes. I make these with plaster, they're mostly for private projects. I don't share these much out in the community but I use them when I'm doing workshops. Also, this one is my absolute favorite because I can do these. These are gonna be coasters. They've even got the little felt sticky bit stuck on the back. I absolutely love them. So that one's from the Happy Darting Company and I'll put a link to that specific one in the description box below. Also from the Happy Dotting Company is this little thing. Now it's for these. Mostly for dotting but you can use them for whatever you like. Right in the middle when they're molded they have a raised little spot and that's dead center of the rock so if you are using it for dotting you know where the middle is again from the happy dotting company is this stunning little love heart that again is the happy dotting company my favorite of favoritists or favoritist of favorites are these molds this is a nice squashy mold these are from devon dotting and they are fantastic this is the 80 millimeter flat mold and it gives you things like this. Again, what Devon Dotting do is they give you a center guide, but whereas the other company have a little raised dot, this one has a tiny indent and that is brilliant. There's also this mold. I'm trying to have a look if I've made anything with this. Let's have a look. Nope, that's another 80 mil. But Devon Dotting, that's where I've been buying most of my molds from recently for specific projects. I've got some mushroom molds. 
and I was having a look on their Facebook page the other day and they're going to be doing scales as well so I'm super super excited about that. In addition to those there's also these moulds these are the ones that I've been using recently for let's have a look we've got a rock doggo we have the flower for the Mother's Day project and mm, oh yep yeah, it is the owl not sure if that project's done yet but if not then you know it's coming so there's this there's three in this and these are pretty cool these are pretty cool also the same brand i'll put a link for these in the description box below the same brand we've got smaller ones six in those each a completely different size let's have a look we've got this size and this size as well as a few others as so your places to go for these would be your amazon your ebay um, check out etsy as well devon dotting and happy dotting company are on etsy devon dotting also do a shop on their website i'll put a link to that they do molds and they also do precast ones for you so they do all the hard work for you but where's the fun in that guys make your own and speaking of making your own that leads us nicely on to the next bit of what to make yours with Leading nicely on from the last section, we're now going to be having a look at what you can make your own rocks from. I've run through the moulds, now we're going to be having a look at the casting product. If you can't get your own rocks from the garden centre or somewhere like that, I've got a, another midweek short on that about taking stones from rivers and beaches. I'll put a link to that in the description box below for you to have a look. I am not going to be able to show you two out of the three products that I use for casting simply because they come in 25 kilogram bags and my workshop is so small I'm just gonna look stupid oh first product we're going to be having a look at uh, that's a nice light one as well is resin plaster this is quite expensive for me I've got my own budget restraints and I buy this every now and again from Amazon really great for personal projects I've made a few really nicely decorated mushrooms out of this with moulds from Devon Dotton and if I can find a picture I'll put one there if I can't find a picture then I'm gonna look pretty stupid just going over this way so that's really cool I should imagine you can also get that at any good craft store the next product that I'm going to tell you about is postcrete or a quick set concrete we get that from B&Q, but no doubt you can get it from somewhere else or another hardware store. So I'm going to move over and please, I hope that I can find a picture of the product that I'm talking about. I think it's a blue circle one. That's a fast setting one. You can also buy in 25 kilogram bags, again from your hardware stores, your B&Qs and all that kind of stuff, uh, a ready mixed concrete. Now, what I would suggest with that is, again, it comes in the 25 kilogram bags and it comes with the little stones in. So, you know, you've got one of your garden sieves, not your kitchen sieve, a garden sieve. Sieve out some of those big pebbles, put them to one side, give them a good wash. You can use them for the top of your plant pots. That's what I've done. But it's the quick set concrete that is my go-to favourite for speed and I mix a little bit at a time and they're done with. Brilliant. Other product that I use is in a massive huge bag there is Polycraft Formula Fine Casting Plus Casting Powder and it's got fiberglass in it. So when mixing, please make sure you've got goggles and a mask on. I'll put a picture of it here. That's what I'm using right now. I can't pick it up off the floor. It's 25 kilograms and I have made so many. In fact, these are made out of it. And I've just got a gazillion, there's a big basket full of them here. And it's going to take me forever to use it. And yet, when I use this stuff, it goes in five minutes. What you can also use is a plaster of Paris. These ones that you cast, unless they're concrete, 
The ones that you cast with this plaster, I would not recommend that you send them out for travelling rocks. Okay, but the concrete ones are pretty okay. Not as good as a proper rock, obviously, but they do the job when you're stuck. I hope the section on what I use to cast my rocks with was helpful to you. If I've left you with any questions, don't forget, let us know in the comments below and we'll get back to you on that as soon as possible. So hopefully I've covered just about everything and it's all now in one place. This will be helpful for loads of other people as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed this week's midweek short, guys, don't forget that all our midweek shorts are you led, which means if you've got a comment or a question that you'd like us to tackle, then let us know in the comments below or over on our Facebook group and we'll put the little thing down there or comment on our Instagram and that's going to be down there as well or our Facebook page and I'll shove that down there as well. Any of our social media, if you want us to tackle anything, just let us know. We release new tutorials every Monday. If you've enjoyed this week's video, please don't forget to like and share it with your friends. If you'd like to help the Taff Rocks channel out, there's some links in the description box below for Patreon, Ko-fi and an Amazon wishlist. Before you leave today, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and click that little notification bell. Until I see you next time, keep on rocking. Ciao for now.